Hey guys, welcome to Garden Obsessions. Today we find ourselves out in the back garden. Um, it's a very pretty day. It almost seems like summer here in North Carolina. And we have the kids and everybody's just out here having a great time. We decided it was a perfect time to go ahead and pot up the David Austin roses that we received through, um, through the mail. If, for anybody that got to see the unboxing, those are it. We already went ahead and did one. And we have these two right here left to do. So we're gonna go ahead and show you so, um, how to pot them up. Yeah, well, first of all, the, the, the roses we're gonna pot today is the uh, Gertrude Jekyll. Um, now for these, uh, it, it's a pink rosette and I got a picture of it right here. Show it to y'all real quick. Um, we absolutely fell in love with these. It's got a uh, old rose fragrance. It's superb, strong, and preferably balanced. Upright and very healthy. So the reason we got these is they're upright. Uh, we plan to put an obelisk in here and have them just grow up into that obelisk and it's 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 something we're very excited about we also selected this variety due to the uh the zone that we're located in um yes so if you go onto the the david austin website or if you, you've received the catalog um you can find in there exactly uh what rose actually fits your zone and stuff like that uh these we particularly picked as well because we're going to have them in a more shadier location yes um we're going to try to see if we can put them behind um what is it the hollies we have if if that part is still full sun but at a, about what four hours in yeah. in the morning four hours of good lighting or five and then you get a good shading but very bright light so they'll still be getting good sun that um, they can take a little bit more shade. So that's very important when picking out these roses, any rose. Yeah, um, definitely. So but I'm, what's good about the David Austin is that you, like you said, you can yeah. go into the website and they'll tell you exactly what type of rose for con either con container. Container wise, climbing roses, uh, shrub roses. Again, one of the reasons uh, uh, we picked these is because we, we, we did the research and, and found exactly where we're gonna put this stuff. Um, we have a number of David Austin roses, but each one we pick with the thought in mind of where it's going to go, what we're going to use it with, yeah. and, and the location that it's going to be at as far as uh, sun, no sun, you know, uh, uh, tall, sh uh, short and chubby, uh, just depends on, on... And so far they've done really well. Uh, we'll show you in a little bit some of the other ones we got. Um, there was one that we've heard that doesn't bloom for everyone and one or two yeah. years are waiting for it but i think it it has to do a lot with with choosing picking the right rose for the right zone and, and we'll show you that one in a minute okay. uh, first of all let's get these potted now again these are the Gertrude jekylls uh these are two quart pots we got in the mail this is how big they actually are but uh rows are vigorous growers and and we'll show you again like i said the roses we have they pretty much outgrew so we're starting off with the five to seven gallon container um, obviously, uh, you can buy them in three gallons, and they do well in three gallons. Again, we'll show those. Um, but you want to, if you're going to up pot them, you want to go five, five gallons and higher, basically, uh, uh, five to seven gallons. This is a, about a seven-gallon container that we found. Uh, it's an urn style that's going to go nice where we want it at. Um, but we're going to get these in here, and we'll show you exactly what we're using. Okay, so what we already went ahead and did was put in here some bark, so it could drain well, about two inches of, of um, bark and then we went ahead and filled in with potting soil um, now Ambrose is gonna go ahead and put the so it's right here yeah so this is a mycorrhizae fungi and it helps establish the roots and stuff like that uh, what she was saying earlier was the uh, the pine the, the the bark that we use is actually pine bark mulch it helps to retain water in the bottom and it helps the drainage from from keeping there um, so we're gonna start off with the mycorrhizae fungi uh, again this is gonna help to establish the roots and get them going um, and you can buy this package on their website as well. Um, for bigger roses, you're gonna to wanna to use about an ounce of this stuff. This is a three ounce package. We're only gonna use about two to three tablespoons uh, in here since it's a smaller rose and it's not gonna use, it's not gonna need that much to get the roots established in there. And stay moist. All right, so when they, when they get here, um, these things, first of all, they're packaged really nicely and, and uh, like I said, we showed the picture on, on there of how they come. Um, but they come with this uh, uh, kind of straw right here that helps retain moisture. And we're just going to remove that before we actually get this potted up. Make sure you try to um, remove that or or pot them up as soon as they get here. Um, so that moisture doesn't stay on top so, yeah, so, and rot them. So uh, what we notice is that they, they, they put a, a little bit of mulch in here as well on top. And it covers the root ball. 
One thing you want to do is when you pot these up is you don't want to cover the root ball, but they do that to keep it moistened. Um, and we just went ahead and watered it while we had them still before we planted them. But as we plant them in here, we're not going to keep the mulch on top. We're going to separate that from the root ball. Okay, so we don't want to put them in too low. Look at those roots, guys. So one thing I did want to mention, so when I say we use the pine bark mulch in the bottom of the container is to help drain. So when you buy like a three, uh, three gallon container with the roses already established or you buy these two quarts, you're gonna come with a lot of mulch and the reason for that, like I said, is they're, they're, they're nursery pots. Um, as you see at the nurseries, they go around, they water real quickly and it just helps to drain faster but, but still absorb that water so they continue to grow. Once you get them at home, you don't need that much mulch in there. You still want some mulch to retain some water but you don't need that mulch in there or else you're gonna drown out the roots. Like I said, at the nurseries, they're constantly watering them and it's just continuously draining. But at home, once you get them in the ground, like I said, you don't want to waterlog the roots. When you get them in a container, you don't want to waterlog the roots in the containers as well. So that's one reason why we put it at the bottom and we don't mix it up in here so it doesn't absorb that much water in the roots. Okay. Now the soil you get, um, we use 100% organic uh, potting soil. Um, you don't want to get something um, that's going to compact real easily and, and, and get really compact, especially with yeah. young plants. Um, you want those roots to be able to spread, so you want a fluffier potting soil. Um, I would even dare to say use some, uh, some elevated garden bed soil. Um, it's a little bit fluffier as well, but you don't want to use something, like I said, like, like garden soil or, or some topsoil or, or heavy compost, especially with roses. You want them to go ahead and spread those roots and have plenty of room to expand because, um, like I said earlier, these the roses are vigorous growers and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna grow pretty fast and 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 by the time you know it, these things are, are already showing buds and ready to bloom. Yeah. Now we got pretty lucky with these um, pots too. Um, we've been looking in places, random places like Walmart and just random little stores here and there. And um, we're actually going to go with terracotta pots. That's what we really want. But um, Ambrose started talking to me about how not such a smart idea right now with the move. Because they'll probably definitely um, break yeah, on so, us. Uh, yeah, definitely break terracotta. It, 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 if you don't know uh, much about terracotta, um, one of the main uses of terracotta is that it's, it's, it's very absorbent and it breathes easily. Um, it's healthy for the plant. So if you've seen terracotta, you've seen the nice uh, uh, light color that it has, and as soon as it gets wet, it turns into like a dark orange. Yeah. That's because it's absorbing the water, and that's one of the main uses of terracotta and why it, it's good to it, use. It also dries and, really fast, and it dries so you have really to be fast. watering um, it a lot. So we would prefer to use uh, terracotta, but the, like I said, with those absorbing that much water, um, we're afraid it's going to be too heavy, and we may pick it up when we move, and yeah. it's completely going to shatter. And, and you know, we've seen terracotta pots shatter all the time, and that's one, you know, especially working with a bigger container, we don't want that to happen on But us. we got really lucky, because uh, we've been loving the whole gray look, and we're actually gonna, we were looking for gray terracotta. It's super hard to find it around oh, yeah. here, but we got lucky with these, so. So the next thing we're gonna do, once we got this potted up, like I said, we put the mycorrhizae in there to help the roots establish. The next thing we're gonna use is, we're gonna use um, some rose cone in here. And that's just to get it fertilized, um, to get that initial uh, uh, growth going. And like I said, just a few tablespoons of fertilizer, a few tablespoons of mycorrhizae. You don't need much for these small plants. Um, so with the fertilization, another thing with the fertilization is, is uh, the best time to fertilize your roses. So if you got a young plant like this, you want to fertilize initially when you plant it. Uh, something that's been established, like the ones we have out front, those have been growing, they're in their second year growing. Uh, they got some nice big blooms. As soon as the first bloom comes around and you prune those off, that's when you want to fertilize your roses. So just keep that in mind. Fertilize as soon as the, uh, the first blooms are. And I've read that over and over so many times. And, you know, directly from the David Austin uh, uh, website. Um, so, you know, it, and it's been working. And then you don't want to fertilize again until maybe uh, uh, midsummer or late summer, even in fall as well. Because uh, with these David Austin roses, especially in our zone, like I said, your zones may be different. You might get blooms in different locations. Yes. Um, but in our zone especially, I mean, we have blooms till what, Halloween? Yes, we do, till fall. Um, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. last year I, we were still getting blooms till fall. Winter was almost here and we were receiving blooms still. Yep. So it's different everywhere, guys. 
All right, guys, so that's pretty much going to do it for this rose right here. Yeah. Um, we're going to go ahead and show off some of the other roses that we got so you can see exactly um, how fast they grow. How fast they grow. Let me move yeah. this one out of the way real quick. You want to get that small one? So we're loving this one, one that um, I wanted to bring in red into the garden. And I told Ambrose, you know what, it has to be done with a rose. So we went ahead and got Darcy Bustle. And Darcy Bustle has these huge, huge I mean, blooms and it's going just crazy. Um, some already done. You will be... We'll prune those off nicely. Prune them off, but um, look at... Look at that size, guys. Yep. And if you haven't seen the pruning video, uh, I, I, I would suggest you go check it out. Um, a great way to prune the roses, how to, where to prune them so you don't get any uh, die off and any diseases in your roses. I, I, I'll link that up on top here and you can go ahead and check that one out as well. Um, but again, these things were pretty much bare root planted and yeah. about that tall with like two or three stems just sticking out like this. And in a matter of two months, um, this is what we got. The one we just planted, we're gonna revisit that in two months and show you guys how fast these actually grow because I'm telling you, these roses are, are some of the best roses we've ever had and they just completely grow. And, and the this fragrance. One, I mean, oh yes, the fragrance is just amazing. Yeah. Um, but you can have this one in full sun and water. Water, I've been watering it every day. Um, and I think that's why it's been doing so great. I just yep. try to keep up with what they would do at the garden center. We haven't changed it out of the pot yet. Um, we actually have that gray one right there if you want to show them the yep. pot. We found some other ones. Looks like if it's terracotta, but it's not. It's, it's just a gray um, plastic container. Um, just perfect thing right now for us because of the move. But it's just perfect for it. All right, guys. So this one right here is called Teasing Georgia. Um, the crazy thing about this one is it was a slow grower and we feared <laughs> that it it's wasn't so going to grow because everywhere we heard was it took forever to bloom, hence the name Teasing Georgia. But yeah, uh, I don't know what it is, but this thing just miraculously uh, in a matter of days just started showing some buds all over the place. They're about to open. You can start seeing already the, yeah. the yellow. You can see the yellow. So this one is, is more of a, uh, again, like I said, we picked some roses uh, uh, to what we want and want to do with them. This is a climber. And as you can see, it, it's it's already wanting to climb something. We just haven't put it where it needs to go, but we'll definitely do that. But as you can see, like some of these are going to grow the way they're intended to grow. A, again, a climbing rose, the one we just showed you was more of a shrub, um, upright rose. This one gets big. Yep. If you let it, it'll, it'll get huge. All right, so let's show you another one. All right, so this one right here is Olivia Rose Austin. Um, it has, what, a day or two that it just started to open up its blooms. Yep. And guys, they're they're just gorgeous. There's something about us loving the pink ones. We gotta, love all of them. I got I to gotta show you guys. Yeah. <laughs> He's super excited for this just one. Just look at that bloom right there. Isn't that one of the most beautiful blooms you've ever seen? Uh, that's one reason why I absolutely fell in love with this one. And the pink is not a strong pink, it's more of a pastel pink. And I don't know what it is about it, I just, just absolutely love it. Has a great fragrance as well. Not too strong, as again, as, as stated, if you read all these this tags, it tells you exactly. Uh, like I said, this one, it uh, flowers early in the season and it has a medium fragrance. So medium fragrance, it, it's exactly what it is. It's a medium fragrance. It's not overly fragrant um, like some of the other ones that we're going like to show Harlow you Like Harlow Carr, like the one or, we've had yeah. for since the beginning but, that we've been here. But it does have a fragrance and it, it's a medium fragrance and it's, it, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. It's perfect. Um, let me show you the next one here. Now this one's probably the most fragrant rose we have so far. Now the reason I say so far is because Harlow car in the front scents the whole yeah. front and you can sometimes yeah. walk out to the side of the house and smell that scent coming to the backyard. Yeah. This one is not placed in a spot where the wind's blowing, but if you smell this one. It's Lady Emma Hamilton. It's got uh, hints of all kinds of fruits and it, it's the color on this one's absolutely amazing. Again, if you see this bloom right here, uh, you would mistake that for a peony. Um, and we've had people yeah, mistake it, it for a peony. Everybody's asking um, on social media, what is that? Because it just looks so pretty. But another thing that I, I, just, I we failed to even talk about was um, 
in winter, I notice there are roses with stems that oh, are, that yeah. um, we have one brother Cadfield, and I, I encourage everybody to pick out roses that have color stems because in winter they look so pretty. And to me, that's just something, um, winter interest. Yeah, so this one has it. Definitely. It has a colored um, stem. We have one in the front called Brother Cadfield. Yeah. Um, if that thing had no uh, foliage or anything on there, you would easily mistake that for a dogwood. Um, there, Definitely. It's, it's, that's how red the stems are, but it's beautiful. Uh, it's starting to turn green now, which is which I like about that one because it turns green uh, during spring and summer. And then, like I said, in fall, it was red, so it still had a nice uh, uh, attractiveness to the front uh, yeah, garden over there. it's really pretty. Uh, and these roses, I mean, uh, the reason we've been getting this is because they're they're... They're just, they, they've probably been the best performers that we've had in our garden, aside yeah, from the hydrangeas that we absolutely love. But uh, these these have been amazing. I mean, we've had roses before that just, um, I'm not sure if it's the salt water and the air because we're so close to the coast over here, or the humidity or the, the rain that we constantly get over here, but uh, our other roses suffered black spot, mildew. Yeah. Um, these are probably some of the most disease resistant roses um, that I have ever ever dealt with and i'm talking about going back to my you know mother grandmother's roses uh i'm sure yeah, your family the, roses yeah. as well um, i agree with that it, it, they're just i mean they've it, other than hotter climates i mean you don't see a lot of uh, disease and stuff like that but we're from texas where the humidity is pretty bad and you, you get a lot of uh, mildew it, and stuff like it's that it's like what i like to tell everybody and i insist by trying to make sure that you read before when you start picking out the rose make sure that you read it if it's for your zone if it's going to take the heat if it's going to take the sun there's roses that just won't so i think that's why they've done so well because um the nursery we go to carries them yeah. so you know the the garden center is going to have what is good what thrives here yep. in and, this area yep and, and i don't want to disappoint you guys because uh we've done a lot of research the nursery that we go to is one of the few nurseries on the east coast that yes. actually carries three gallon container uh david austin roses so unfortunately uh they don't carry them everywhere you may find them at, at, at some of the big box stores when they do get some shipments in yeah. but the variety is going to be limited um so that's one of the things we don't want to confuse people with is that you can just go out and find these anywhere no. um that's why we ordered some of the ones that we ordered because they weren't readily available um but for the most part the nursery that we go to it, they, they always carry a huge selection, huge selection of them yeah. so again uh one of the few nurseries you're going to find a three gallon container unfortunately um, if you're looking for them, the best bet is going to be is to order them online. Um, but, I mean, I, I can guarantee you that you're not going to be disappointed. I mean, it's just, they're it's just, just amazing It's you get to roses. enjoy them. And, and, you know, we try to make sure that we pick out the plants that we are going to be able to enjoy. It, we understand gardening. There's always something going on. It's not 100% guaranteed that there's not going to be something happening with the plants, you know, because of anything that happens in the weather, with the weather um, during the, the year. But... But so far for us, we've been very lucky with the type of plants yep. that we've been buying. We do a lot of research um, and we've been, I don't want to say lucky. I think it's really, we've read, we've been doing our reading oh, yeah. and researching and so far so good. All right guys, so that's going to do it for this video. I know it got a little bit long, but we can talk about this stuff all day. We, it's something we absolutely enjoy doing. Um, we were talking about it earlier, one of the uh, reasons why I got started with the uh, with the gardening was the the pruning of the roses it, it's something that's therapeutic something this that is I enjoy where, it, doing. where it all started for yeah. ambrose um and it gets everybody involved like i said there's something for everybody yeah. um one of the things what was our goal for this year the goal is to have um to have a purpose in the garden but we love to be surrounded by, with beauty so we want there to be beauty but with a purpose um it's not just sitting there for you know just to be pretty um how is this you know a purpose in the garden how does it serve its purpose it's therapeutic it's something that um you come home to yep. you relax the scent of it enjoying the flowers um we're reading you can even make tea out of you know roses where it's just opening so many doors to just one and it, and, plant and it's definitely something we're going to explore i mean we yeah you know with the kitchen garden going already i mean we've already started using that stuff in there um, like I said, the roses bring plenty of pollinators. I mean, yes, we got them all over the place, and, and that's something that's going to benefit not just us, but it's going to benefit the uh, the kitchen garden, the vegetables, and stuff like that that we got going on. 
Um, but it's just something we absolutely enjoy. It, it brings the family together. Everybody enjoys doing something on the garden. Everybody has their favorite plant, their favorite type of, of annual, perennial yeah. uh, shrub. Everybody has something different that they love. I know Angie loves the uh, the hydrangeas and the roses especially. Yes. <laughs> um, but it's just like I said, it's my it, favorite. There, there's something for everybody, and it's something that you know that we're going to enjoy doing probably for the rest of our lives. It's not going to stop us from doing other things and we want to do a combination of different things. Like I said, beauty with a the purpose. There, there's got to be a purpose in here, but we also got to have the beauty and that's something that we're going to continue to go with. Yeah. Um, so, you want to wrap this up? <laughs> so guys, I hope you enjoyed this and we hope that you bring some beauty with a purpose to your garden as well. So thank you very much and go ahead and subscribe, yep. like, and hit that bell guys. Bye! See you later.